Hello and welcome to another episode of the Clear Show. It is me, Tiger. Let's begin. So you are building your MLOP stack. It's going to support your structured data machine learning pipelines. Now stop me if I'm wrong. Probably everyone is trying to get you to use feature stores, right? Let me tell you something. It's okay not to worry about that right now. There is a way to build the rest of the infra right now and the feature stores later without scrapping everything. How? By thinking with feature stores. But first, what are feature stores? Well, if you are asking this in 2021, you must be just waking up from a long hibernation or just graduate. Hey, what's going on? Did you start the video without me? I said no memes. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to explain what feature stores were. So to understand what's a feature store, we need to make sure we are all on the same page on what's a feature. If you're not doing structured data, machine learning, think of it as a column on a huge Excel sheet. That column, by the way, for some reason, they tend to have cryptic names. Please don't do that. Anyhow, that column might have useful information that you can train a model with, such as the number of siblings on board the Titanic with the person. That's the column. Or something uh, that is only important for inference, such as user ID. More often than not, someone in the data science team found out that you can engineer a feature. That means write a function that produces a new column based on the existing ones. For example, the amount of money a person spent in an online pay-to-win game in the last 30 days. That sounds very useful if you're trying to predict the user behavior, but that means that you would need to calculate this value for each user every day. Finally, there are also features in unstructured data, but this isn't the time or the place. So why a store? Well, since we tend to have not just one engineered feature, but sets of features that need to be calculated, uh, but some of them only valid for a while, such as the rolling sum of the money spent I just mentioned. Well, then the store, rather than a database, is a place where in an organization, you would go to get fresh versions of the engineered features for any purpose. Another reason to call it a store is that if you have more than one data scientist, you probably want them to be able to share information about engineered features and also not calculate the same feature twice. There's actually more to a feature store than just this. It's actually a dual database with two sides, one offline and one online. One for real-time inference with very low latency where you can query a single row and get all the features you need in order to plug into the model. And in the offline mode, you can get full columns for training or model scoring. The online feature store is a massive piece of engineering. Uh, you probably want to reach for that if you actually need low latency online inference for structured data. But in all other cases, maybe something that actually works with what you have, something that can maneuver easily between your daytime tasks and business logic uh, is better. Okay, I know I said no memes, but X times out of 10, you'd probably want to build something custom made anyways. Uh, and it will take a while to build and integrate. So why not just build your own feature store offline that is, but make it so that if you ever need to switch to something bulky and complicated, your own feature engineering won't be a bottleneck. That's called thinking with feature stores. And this is the take home message of today. You probably don't need the feature store right now, but the abstraction it allows is useful. So why not build something like it? And this is something we're gonna do next time on the Clear Show. So tune in, like us, subscribe, tell your friends, the whole thing that YouTubers do, right? See you guys next time.